is a, it's a muscle memory. It is. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 13 Nights of Halloween. It is the final night of the 13 Nights of Halloween, and I'm joined here with Common. Hello. And for tonight's 13 Nights of Halloween, I decided to dedicate it to specifically talking about um, Fago and its actual treatment of Halloween over the years. This was originally going to be a fully edited up video, and then I remembered, wait a minute, I go on vacation and lose a week's time. So instead, it's going to be a, dis a discussion. <laughs> and thankfully, I have Common here. Hello, Common. Hello. Hello, um, everyone. Just to remind anyone, do you want to say very quickly what your background is in, F in Fago? Yes, so I actually started playing out the the game back when it came out in, I believe, 2017. Oh, for the NA side. Yes, I, was it 2018, 2019? Uh, I, mean, I think it's 2017. But anyways, I it'd get I two years difference. It, it would be it would be 2017. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and ever since I've been I've been playing it. I did have a few mirror periods where I dropped off, but now. As part of the community, I was once a subreddit moderator of um, the major R Grand Order, and now and now I even dabble in a little bit of cosplaying here and there. Um, I went as a uh, Oberon um, last anime expo, so I'm still very much involved in the community. I draw fan art where I can. I talk about it with a passion. The only things that I avoid, like the plague or JP spoilers, so I get to. Um, be able to experience it um, when it comes to NA two years later. So that speaks a lot about my patience and how long I'm willing to to wait. Mm -hmm. Now, um, yeah, so that's my experience. All right, there we go. Just as an introduction to people, and now mm -hmm. let me introduction. Let me introduce this thesis that I got right here. So since the game has been released since 2015, I think it's fair to say that. We've had declining returns in terms of what does Fago actually consider a good Halloween event. Um, on NA, we most recently got this, but JP got this two years ago. And I can't believe that there was not a bigger deal made about this. But maybe that just shows how much uh, Japan does not really vibe with Halloween. So... Um, before we get into that, we have to also specifically make it known, just so everyone knows that both of us are aware... Halloween is not a traditional ho holiday that is celebrated in Japan. It's not celebrated in a lot of places, actually. It's mostly an American thing in terms of our specific version of Halloween. Obviously, in Mexico, we have Day of the Dead and stuff like that, which is a form of uh, celebration around Halloween time. But for the most part, what most people consider the traditional Halloween experience, it's a very American-made type of holiday. So I'm not, like, super surprised that a Japanese-focused dev team isn't going to give it the most attention in the world when you compare it to something like Christmas, which has a much bigger cultural impact that is celebrated everywhere. But I will say still that they still put the name of the damn thing on the tin, <laughs> so I get to complain about it when it's bad. That being said, it's not like they don't do research. They've, they've clearly shown that in regards to cultural respect and and um, the appropriate respect to give to very different cultures within the game. Heck, they brought out Mandricardo, who was this, like, footnote of a random dude who they, like, found out and then, like, fleshed him out. They give um, Christopher Columbus this very unique treatment where he's shown as this, like, profitable, like, maniacal, like, like monster rather than like oh the guy who discovered the uh the america and the, the americas mm -hmm. so it's not like out of the question to expect that they would and i would like to start out by thinking it's probably more that it's the writers i think likely the people that usually are the ones that are doing like heavily heavy research into like the culture and things are just like usually like like Nasu and Takayuchi and like the general type moon like writers room. I don't exactly know who writes the Halloween events, especially the last one. But how much focus there was on the um on the water margin or uh, I believe that's what it's called. The water I margin or expect, Sukiden. Yeah. I honestly expected to see Yorobuchi's name on it because that's his bread and butter. He he's really into 
um, Chinese culture overall. That's why he wrote um, Lost Belt 3, and that's why he has that one puppet series where it's like um, just like Chinese figures. Like, um, yes, I know, I know what you're talking about. The mm-hmm. I can't remember the exact name of it, but I do remember what it is. Uh, yeah. In, I think it might come down to that because, as you said, with a lot of the cultural references, they do, they do exist. And for for example, for Christmas, Samba Quetz, it looks like a very weird actual like pairing of it of them going. Oh, they just wanted to do a wrestling theme around this, not knowing. And for a lot of people that did not know this, in Mexico, they actually did try to make uh, they did try to replace Santa with Quetzalcoatl. And that's where the idea of Samba Santa actually comes from, is the idea of, for a brief bit there, the Mexican government was trying to have um, a replacement for Santa, and it being Quetzalcoatl, and Quetzalcoatl would be the one to actually deliver presents to people. And if they're able to find a reference like that deep enough, I really don't have trouble like buying into the fact of like, okay, so they weren't able to do any research on anything else about how anything functions or figure anything cool. So, with Halloween, it started way back in 2015, and um, for the first three Halloweens, which back in the day, I believe it was just called Halloween 2015, I don't remember if it had like a fancy long title to it, but I can actually quickly check to see if it did. Um, uh, 2015 for Japan, and for um, uh, the NA side of the game, it would have been 2017. The Adventure of the Singing Pumpkin Castle. This is the first one. The Mad Party 2017. This is the one that is maybe the most Halloween-like in that it's actually about a party that takes place on Halloween. Um, and I, then I, I, mm-hmm. Go ahead. I, uh, I think it's actually interesting because every Halloween event, as far as I remember, has that one CG where like your background is decorated. You go into my my room and then you can see like like the foes and the pumpkins and all the lanterns and all that and i remember that cg very vividly being used in like every previous halloween event and this one has it for the my room decoration but it just did not show up at all throughout like throughout this um current event that we have which i also noted even before you started talking about it on uh on twitter mm-hmm. i was just like are we at least not gonna like put the bats and the spiders on the on this on these parties? Like, you have such a good opportunity. The the servants are like every every night. They're literally partying every night. You could totally combine Halloween with this. Treat it like it's an endless Halloween party. What are yep. you doing? They didn't. They decided just not to do that. It is it is fascinating how much the new event does not care that it is a Halloween event. It is bold in its strokes of being, no, it's Chinese, actually. (laughs) And there's nothing wrong (laughs) with being Chinese. But when I played the event, I said, this is very Chinese. And (laughs) It's it's just like, and then you look at Ellie, too, and it's like, what part of you is Halloween? But, you know, I guess, like, going back... um... And you'll probably talk about this later, but, like, how much of Mecca Elizabeths are really also Halloween, you know? You know, the the, the thing I'll say about this is that even <clears throat> if the Mecca Lizzes didn't feel like a Halloween-type event, even though I believe their ultimate goal was an endless Halloween night, um, the introduction that they did for it was done in the style of, like, an old Godzilla monster movie. And a monster movie is 100% a, <laughs> a Halloween type of movie. I would consider watching a Godzilla as a kind of a Halloween movie, even if, though it is not a horror movie. It is still about a monster terrorizing people. I it's- agree, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead. So they did a fantastic job of doing that kind of setup of stuff. Um, and that is something that is, again... When you look at it from the outside, it doesn't seem very Halloween-like, but they found a way and they were able to come up with an interesting idea for it. Um, and then, funny enough, that's the, that was the last of the Liz Halloweens for, for that year. Yeah. Um, um, and, I, and I totally agree with you. I was also thinking that angle that like, is based off of Monster monster Bash movies, Godzilla, mm-hmm. and then all that. That's that's pretty... That's a That could be a Halloween tradition, because it's still like about monsters but 
Um, but back in the day on uh, TNT, Monster Madness it would happen around uh, October season, and they would totally have Monster Madness where it was like, "Oh, it's a Godzilla thon. We're gonna watch Godzilla movies for this Halloween season," mm-hmm. and it works out um, because Halloween is more than just specifically the horror. It is a very specific aesthetic of things that can be considered together. Because there was that those years where, um, if you look at the specific history of horror. Um, you see the classic age of the original dudes of Dracula, the Frankenstein, the Wolfman, but then you have, as the ages of, as the fears of America change, so do the horror movies around it. So then when the atomic bomb hit, suddenly people were more care, uh, cared more about, um, were f- afraid of specifically nuclear testing and the bomb. So then you got the atomic age and that's where you got an entire new, that's where Godzilla comes in. That's where you get movies like The Claw, Them, the movie about radioactive alien, um, ants and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that's where you kind of start to see the blob. You see a lot of movies that are monster movies. And when you look at them and you watch them in a modern day context, you're like, this doesn't really feel like a horror movie. But to them, it was because the horrors of what they were going through, these were movies that were specifically touching on those specific touch zones. So in the case of Mecca Ellie, it fits perfectly because it's fitting on an age that doesn't really get brought up a whole bunch. Nobody talks about the atomic age anymore. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I would be surprised if most new people really knew anything about the age of those specific movies, just because they're not usually widely talked about, but they are specifically liked because um, they fit a very specific aesthetic. And we and it gets like, it stays that way up until, I want to say maybe... 70s is when it starts to just change a little bit we go from 50s to 60s um 60s goes into a little bit of the gothic horror but now i'm going into more horror things but either way mm. it's very easy to see where mecca illy's uh inspiration for it comes from well, it's this- also not, it's even further than that is that like the event is actually has actually kind of like that spooky theme to it like it might not be like too explicit but that's i believe that's the event that introduces osaka bay Hime, whose mm-hmm. whole thing is about like being so yeah, that's, she, she that's has the theme, at least for the SSR connected to the event. But here we have Juan Joe, and I love our our girl failure, like sobbing baby of a mess. Mm-hmm. But girl does not have anything like horror related to her except for those spectral ghost legs, and that's really it. Yeah, that 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 really is it. Um. And I think around after Ahsoka Bahime, she is the the last one until maybe, mm, I guess, technically speaking, Cinderella Liz does count as one. Even though the personality of her doesn't, Jacques de Molay, um, uh-huh. she, is, she obviously has both the... the uh, a foreign god, uh, Shib uh, Nagoref, which is a... Um, I'm trying to think of the right word for his name. Eldrick Being. There you go. Um, and has ties to the specific horror novels written by H.P. Lovecraft and stuff like that. Um, I actually don't remember if he wrote specifically Shib Nagoref or if it's one of those extended mythos type things. But either way, it ties back to that. So it makes sense for her. She might be the only, the, the, the most fitting one of them all. Because usually the SSR for Halloween... Um, has a little trouble bit of fitting into it. Do you remember the first SSR for Halloween? Yeah, it was the Mamo. It was. And I will grant you, she is a monster, so she does kind of fit in it, but she's not in the event whatsoever. If there was ever been... I think I've only ever seen this one other time. Can you name the other time where the featured SSR was not a part of the event itself? I definitely, you like remember it i just can't like name it like directly off the top of my head but i have had moments where i'll i'll like rant about it like why is why is the ssr not participating in like the event yeah it it was around christmas time next year around christmas time next year yeah a year after uh in 2018 oh in 2018 and you listen here and this uh, one Sephora. had to this this specific one had to start in um, November, because we were getting ready for Babylonia. Oh, was it Arish? No, because Arish was a part of the story of Hall- of oh, right, Christmas right, right, right. next year. It was Ishtar, 
Ishtar for 2018 was the main SSR and had zero to do with the story whatsoever because really? she was. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. She debuted on a on a Halloween or Christmas. No, she she debuted on a Christmas on a Christmas banner. She was the Christmas unit for 2018. She had wait, really. Yeah, she was. You can look it up. <laughs> the only reason I... that she was made it was because um, Babylonia was coming up, and so they released her for Christmas. And Babylonia's story started December December 5th. Like, they had to start Christmas in November. And then it was the 26th to December 5th. So it was like... It was a short... It was like barely a week of doing stuff. It was like a week and one, two, three, four days maybe. <laughs> it was a weird time. Everyone was getting ready for Babylonia. They wanted to make sure that you were ready. And then I don't remember if... Oh, what about was she connect? Say it again. I'm sorry, say it again. Uh-oh, did I lose you, Common? Well, um, sorry, I'm kind of cutting out here. My internet might be a little bit bad on this side. Um, oh, it's all good. All what, right. what welfare okay. event was she connected to? Christmas it was um, Spam. <laughs> I oh wait, really? Yeah, that that was the the Christmas unit for that year. It was uh, Lily Alter. That. Um, so Lily Alter was the main focus on it, and never dealt with Ishtar at all. And the the second banner pickup was actually Amakasu Shiro, that was like who was an actual SSR that interfere that was involved in the event, but they did not put in like anyone else. It was really weird. And then if you want to know who released for the Babylonia chapter, it was Enkidu. It was a very weird time. But that's the only those are the only two times that they've ever done it. And for Christmas that year it was because they were preparing for bigger things. For <laughs> for Halloween, they just did it. They didn't really have a really good excuse for it. And from there I the the actual batch of units that came with it, um like Cleo in next year for Halloween, and then it's Ahsoka Bahime, and then it is um, not Ilya, the other one. Mm. Of what is the name of Ilya, but adult? Hero? It oh. is with Shiro the bear. Setonia, oh. Setonia. Setonia, yeah. Yep. And then we don't have a Halloween event, and then it comes back around. Uh, it comes back around 2023, which is Cinder Cinderella Liz, and that one is uh, Jacques de Molay, and then finally we get to the most recent one right here. Um, so it's a really weird batch of SSR units going around yeah. here. And in terms of events, around after the third Liz one is when they officially stop really super caring about it. In terms of actually being the main focus, I think with Oniland. Um, Oniland kind of feels like a like a Halloween event, but then it, because it has like a bunch of pumpkins and stuff like that, but it feels more like a theme park style event to me. Um, and I've always had a slight beef with uh, Oni Cure being the welfare when it should have been zombie shooting should have been the welfare for this event. <laughs> because yeah, you're so right. I, I am unbelievably right. You have no idea how mad I was when summer happened and she was in the outfit. And I said, why has she never worn this for Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> because that's the, that's the uh, outfit they gave her for the anniversary CE, if I remember correctly. It is. That is the outfit that they gave her for that. They have never bothered to get... It is one of her best outfits in that they've given her, which is saying something because Shuden has a lot of fantastic outfits. They have never allowed her to have <laughs> to have it anywhere else. It is... And, as always, and the thing is, like, this recently came up, too, because she wears it again in the Scotty, in the Scotty um, Summer event recently. Yep. For, their, for like, her exhibit. Because mm. it's, like, a horror-themed exhibit. And has expressions and everything. So... Just make the outfit. Yep, yeah, just make the outfit and then put it for Halloween. But this is also a good... I'm glad you mentioned it because this is also the actual real reason why we never get um, Halloween events. And I don't feel like... The, the reason why is I think because Japan celebrates horror stuff in summer. Um, 
I did not know this actually. Yeah, so Japan in during like a Japanese um what is the right way of saying it? Um it's kind of like during the summertime is when they decide to watch all the movies and that's when all the big horror movies release in Japan. Um uh, this explains this explains summer camp. This explains why one of my favorite visual novels that's strictly horror based um, takes place entirely in the summer. World End Syndrome, by the way, just plugging that in there. Yes, exactly. That there is a lot of like, I I really wish I remembered why they did it, but th this is why they consider it. It might come down to like literally because they believe something about. Oh, it's because around summertime, that's when they would come around and tell scary stories to each other. Like, during the, like, summer camp and stuff like that. That's when they would get together, you know. And it's similar to what we do in summer camps as well, actually. Where it would be late at night and you'd talk around the campfire and tell a scary, scary story. They've been doing that since, like, the Edo period. <laughs> so, for them, it's always been saying, like, hey, around this time is when we tell each other scary stories. Because it's hot and we want to... Uh, give you a story that will literally like chill you to the bone type of situation. Ah. Um, mm hmm. And then also, that's when they put out haunted houses during the summertime because it's really hot. So it'd be a good idea to actually get people inside there because it will be cool and that way they can experience the. Um, the horror houses that they have in there. So that is a big reason why. So if you ever watch a lot of Japanese media and it's the summer and then they're like going into a spooky house, that's the reason why. Is because they yeah, basically... That makes... mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, it's okay. The, the, I was uh, You were going to agree with me. That, that that makes sense for why you've seen it like that. Yeah, um, yeah I've never once thought about it that like pretty much every horror thing that I can re uh, remember witnessing or seeing it's like in the summer it's why you have like scary like um scary game visual novels like saya which is also by yorobuchi and, the, and then the main girl that is like the fear factor she's in like a summer blouse or like a loose like dress it's why you have like um pixel pixel rpg games that like also take place in the summer and then like it's always the background noise is always like cicadas and crickets and all that. Now, now, now you've like really I've, enlightened me on this. I've opened your eyes to it. I've finally revealed the thing that makes the most sense now. <laughs> you are the you are the Halloween master. I am on this one. You can tell probably that I I care whenever I care deeply about something. I try and look up and understand as much of it as I can. And that is, this is definitely one of those cases. And it's a very interesting kind of, like, cultural thing. So I'm not here to say, like, I want to take it away from them. Because I would love to experience more stories like that. But then we go back to Summer Camp. And I really feel like Summer Camp is one of the best straight-up horror stories that they've told. There's two really, really good horror stories that they've told. Uh, three, if you want to count um, non-event ones. But in terms of actual horror events, it's the Summer Camp. And it is Imaginary Scramble. Those are the two. With Summer Camp being actually a um, a horror theme telling during summer. And has a lot of really cool, crazy effects that go on during it. Like insane videos of like watching. Like, do, do you remember where you were when you were playing the event and then that videotape plays? I absolutely do. Like, I remember the one that first time that I played it, I was just like completely blown away by the quality that i was like bringing because audio because they used audio and visuals like very masterfully because visual wise you really rarely see things that are like fully like animated like videos let alone they like audio that goes through like the story section audio and visual like animations are reserved for the actual gameplay but the visual novel aspect is mostly silent text and then just like the only audio is like the music so like watching those VHSs and then you just hear like like the um, VHS like static effect going on like fully animated while you're hearing like this, this like spooky like rat, like noise it, like, it, so it kind of reminds me of a number station if you've ever heard one of those um, or if you know what that is do you know what a number station is? I feel like I could make a conjecture that it's like like a creepypasta on those like train stations kind of thing but i'm i'm probably wrong on that 
Um, a number a number station is something that you can actually go in and listen to right now. It is basically, from what I understand, a number station in Russia that is like giving off a signal and then occasionally giving out numbers. Uh, you'll hear a Russian man speak and give out numbers and then nobody knows why it's doing that. Um, it is, it's, it's very creepy because there's no actual like explanation as to why it's doing that um it's like shortwave radio stuff so it's like being broadcasted and nobody knows why it's specifically being broadcasted um that's it yeah so it 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 sounds really really weird when you hear it through it and a lot of time people think it's like oh okay so we're it's like spy stuff but you know nobody nobody actually knows but anyway that's what it always reminds me a little bit of in the beginning of it. But it is fantastic stuff, and it is a fantastic horror chapter. Now, the problem is is that, as far as I'm aware of, the community did not like this when it came out originally. Um, they were actually very, very against everything in Summer Camp, from what I remember. Because, uh, obviously, we hear stuff two years uh, delayed in advance. And when I saw it, that it was happening, I was like, oh, that's so cool that they're doing it because, you know, Japan loves, it, it celebrates horror stuff in the summer. That's really cool. Uh, well, from what I understand from the feedback that they got from people was that it was too scary and that they were expecting a lighthearted summer event. Mm-hmm. And instead they got, <laughs> they got that, which was not that. It was a terrifying experience to see if you were someone who's just like, I just want to like see people hang out in their summer outfits and kind of do stuff. Um, it was not that. It was much more I, terrifying. I I find that kind of hard to digest because I freaking love summer camp. It is one of my fair events of all time for storytelling aspects. But moreover, it did have those like fun and like summary parts they just took place in like a actual summer camp like all those side stories you get to see like Ilya and and Kuro and Miyu like hanging out you get to see uh Archer you know just taking a laid back approach do his fishing etc it had all that so yeah. like yeah. you know I feel like a lot of people just kind of like judged it off of just like seeing it like from afar you know they so- might it, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with you for the English speaking side of it is that a lot of people did not play the event when it originally came out and just played it like untranslated and skipped a lot of the scory stuff and all they saw were people in Japan f- either giving feedback of saying something like this but I think whenever they did like one of those like tell us some of your favorite events they never ranked this event very high like they never liked it um kind of from the get-go and i feel like that has always been the reason why we haven't gotten very many stuff because again it'd it'd be tough because i'd have to go track it down but from what i understood or the feedback that people understood from japanese players is that they were not the biggest fan of this event and that kind of stigma stuck around with it for a while because unfortunately on the na side of the team a lot on the team not the team the team doesn't have anything to do with this a lot of time the na players um will hear some form of feedback and they will go, oh, they some I saw someone in J- Japanese write down that this was bad. They must not like this event. Therefore, it must be bad. I oh, can't I wait. That. Yes, it is very annoying. It's what I've always had to deal with with um, the Bunyan event as well. It is very annoying because they right off the bat before I ever experience it already have an opinion on it. And I think it's stupid. And I remember because I think you can actually find tweets of mine saying after I played that event. And this event is literally like a love letter to horror movies. They have Shikabu being the literal lore master of Halloween tropes telling you, oh my god, this is literally a zombie movie. Someone's going to be infected and I bet you I know who it is. <laughs> and she was right. Like it is literally – it is it is amazing. It's a, it's a wonderful story, especially for around Halloween time. Um, after I read that story, I said I am never going to trust the feedback anyone gives from japan that says that this is one of their that this is one of the worst stories oh you have no idea how much times i disagree with like the japanese community of uh of F- fgo it's like it's abundant is it's um it's massive for one recently i i went into trom completely mostly blind except for like one 
one anime TV. And before I go on, are you caught up on Trom? I am. You're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyone here oh. who's not caught up in Trom, now is your time to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll tell you when we're, we're done. Okay, we'll probably put a timestamp or something. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll remember something. I wasn't going to go into big detail, but it's just like, the only thing I knew was that one CG of of Charomaine against uh, Constantinos using their MP bow, because of course that spread like wildfire. Why would it not be? Mm-hmm. I did not expect literally anything else. I was completely like caught off guard by how good everything was, and of course I did know the big you know spoiler of of the fate of someone at the end as well before it came to NA. That was kind of unavoidable with how I was deep in the community, but. Everything and, and, else and, completely and, surprised me. Yeah, and to be fair, if you don't know anything about that character from the get go, you kind of have a, an idea that they are maybe not going to make it, just because it's like, oh, well, I'm aware of this character's history, and this is a bad yeah. place for them to be in. <laughs> Especially you know fate and how like locations and culture and their background influence them, like. Like the idea, I've always liked the idea of fate that like, if you if you're known to be associated to a certain place, you get either power or weakness from it, depending on what happens to you. Mm-hmm. If I if I if I die in the streets of of a city and I get summoned to that city, you you bet I'm probably gonna be like on guard if I'm a servant, kind of thing. Yeah, it's a very cool kind of the location system thing there. It doesn't get super explored, um, but whenever it does, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. like but the along with it, um, the long way and short of what I was trying to get to is the fact that nobody ever talks about how Trom is like in their like top five stories. They mm. never do. I personally went through this like trouble where I was thinking about is this is this. this did I enjoy this more than LB6 at some point? Mm. It, it might sound a little bit blasphemous, but that's actually how I felt reading Trump. It's one of my favorite story arcs in the entire game. I, I thought it was very well written in every in every regard and aspect. And I love what they did for characters like... Um, uh, shoot, I forgot her name. Bronze Berserker was her name. Uh, uh, oh, Salome, Salome, Salome. Uh, yeah. Or as I call her, uh, Salome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I can see I can see that for sure. Of like not fully, and it, a lot of it also hurts that the only time, a lot of the time, you only see the people who are hyper talking about it. And I don't know J- Japanese myself. I know enough to kind of get get a small basis of like where the sentence structure starts, but that's basically it. Um, I cannot actually tell intent or see that or see anything else and for the most part i don't really get japanese people up on my twitter whenever i do see it so i can only really go off of what other people are pointing out to it and unfortunately that leads to a um a unreliable narrator when it comes to hearing about the quality of a lot of stuff which definitely yeah. existed for Trom. it existed for summer camp uh it existed for bunyan you know what it didn't exist for it didn't exist for that fucking God awful fucking um, requiem story. I don't know how nobody, <laughs> literally nobody, ever talked about how terrible requiem was, <laughs> and that apparently some people actually like requiem over in Japan, and I, I don't understand it. Um, I'm I'm neutral to it. I I always enjoy crossovers and collabs, and I never saw it as like stealing a collab from like prototype or anything i just think that it was either them doing something with requiem or just not touching prototype i i thought prototype was going to be set up for more of a bigger thing and that's why they weren't touching that was my reasoning i never saw it as like there are like people who hated it on it because it stole like a collapse one but i do agree the story is kind of lacking and when you ask me about what i remember of it very little i remember it took place in a board game, and that's where Marie Alter or not Alter at the time was um, was introduced. But that's kind of about it. D- yes. Do you remember the werewolf game? I remember being terrible at it. I don't know if like I wasn't reading enough of it to figure oh, it out. 
but I just kind of went along with the flow. If I was the Gouda stat, like, that was there, I would be so lost. Okay, fair enough. As someone who is maybe a little bit more familiar for these werewolf-type games, I knew who it was almost immediately, and I could not stand any of the characters as it went on. Like, it was actively debuffing them the longer we spent on it. It was the clo- I never skipped the story stuff. That is the closest I ever came to being like, I can't handle this anymore. I cannot continue reading this. It, it, made, it infuriated me. And then when Bunyan Event came out and people were saying, like, Bunyan Event is worse than that, probably similar for the reason that you said that they believed that it was stealing it and stuff like that and nobody actually read the mm-hmm. story. Um, yeah. <laughs> based off of a lot of revelations... Not a lot of people apparently were actually reading the stories and picking up the clues about what was going on in that story. I was I was reading on Bunyan and I um when I was reading the Bunyan event, I remember talking to my friend, uh, I was just like, What's there to hate about this? This is actually not that bad. Granted, unfortunately in your case though, it, um the the Bunyan stuff did kind of kind of fell over by the waistline. But Mary Anning, I love Mary Anning and like everything that she was like about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it ended up it ends up being one that I think I have to do a recon. I'd like uh, I think I've said it before. I've said it multiple times. I was working on a video on that, and then um, mainly because I did an entire reading for it on the channel and stuff. And I feel like I might have to go back in there and do one final reading of it because after the revelations of looking for the answers, of looking for what it is, and seeing what it was revealed as, it was like I need to go back and completely <laughs> rewrite a lot of this because everything's strange. I, but re- any- I, re- I, gu- mm-hmm. I guess we do have a chance to kind of like slightly lampshade it about the uh, new Epco material. Yeah, it's true. There you go. Look forward to that in the next one for it. Um but to get back on track onto the main thing here, uh, the Halloween event, for lack of a better terms, I feel like they have decided to start pushing away from. I feel like, I remember saying to someone, this is it, there's no more Liz units. And his reaction was, of course there is, there's still classes available. And I said, no, I don't think you understand. They released a unit that uses every single one of the other ones. They can't release a new one. Because then that NP would be out of date. This is their, we're not doing this anymore. If there has ever been a signal to say, there's no more, it's this unit. This version of Liz, I don't think we're ever going to get another one. And I'm afraid that Liz was the only reason that we ever got Halloween events returned to us. So they are never coming back. And based off of of, uh, JP going two years, skipping Halloween twice... I feel like that's kind of going to be the fate of it. I guess next year is the actual deciding factor of maybe they're going to go on a forever um, cycle of three Halloween events. Four Halloween events, I guess, in the first one. Two years break, two more, two more years of break. Or maybe it really is we've reached the end of the line and they just don't want to do it anymore. Which is really weird to me because... I don't know. If Go has gotten really weird with how they handle events nowadays. Um, Christmas, for example, being what it is and being gutted for what it, it currently is right now, for sure, has seen better days. Um, and I feel like they want to focus more on the story stuff because they've realized they've allowed the story to go on a little bit too long. And they need to finish it up and wrap it up. And that's their main priority at the moment. But I don't know what happens after that's done. Oh, well, you you know that in, um, it's recently said, I believe in either the stream or the Bimitsu, the last Lost Bow arc is this upcoming year. Mm-hmm. This is, this is, we don't know what happens uh, after this, but I believe in the recent anniversary stream for FGO this year for JP, the upcoming stuff that's coming up in this year, that's that's it for the Lost Bow arc. That's it for F, FGO part two. Yeah, or not then, lost balls, done with lost balls, but whatever is um, um, or, or or deal recall, or deal recall, or deal recall. Yeah, from what I understood from people, because again, I, I we don't know. We both of us actually keep do a pretty good job of it. That ordeal recall is basically kind of like a filler gap before the actual finish of the lost belt i from what i understand the lost battle is still not done but i actually don't know and don't correct me on that please thank yeah, you yeah. <laughs> it's okay i don't want to read it 
<laughs> I'll find out myself in two years, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, I will I correct agree. myself and say, like, man, I was wrong in that video. My bad, everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the the continuing on with it, I also feel like the 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 real reason why things have gotten so strange is um, if you don't know this, a lot of events similar to the Halloween one that are usually have a saying like, hey, as long as you finished Orleans, you can join in here. Um, or as long as you beat Fuyuki, you can join us. There's a lot of back-end work on the story to make it make sense to where you currently are in the story. Entire characters will not actually be there for your story if you are further ahead in the story. And other characters will instead be there instead of them because of the change break. And I feel like if we're going to go into a, a, the, a next arc, because I know for sure that Fago is likely going to continue on... <laughs> Nice try, everyone. And I know it makes really good YouTube fun, <laughs> YouTube titles, but it's going to continue on. It makes too much money for it not to continue on. I wonder if there is a certain talk amongst them to be like, well, do we want to start doing less of these kind of events and do a lot more events that require you to be caught up to the story to actually participate in? Because I feel like that's where a lot of their troubles are starting to go from. Because based off of all the work that they have to do to make sure that the event that you're seeing doesn't spoil something in the future and that's how we have weird stuff like um you can participate in summer camp and not have met you yet so instead she will wear shades and hide her identity from you and that's insane to me (laughs) (laughs) i i think that i was actually gonna mention that i think it's kind of funny going from that where they just put shades on you and then you have Gouda not refer to her as senpai or even know who she is to full on branching hidden triggers for even stuff just like mini flashbacks did you know that in the Tengu event if you have not gone through um, Hell's Mandala you will not get the pop up of meeting um uh, I forgot her name, so I'll just I'll just call her. Um... Oh fuck me! I should probably I have to put up another thing there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, I feel like you're gonna cut up like a, a lot of this, and it's like a lot of like my fault. I'm a bumbling. I'm no, a bumbling. Mess. It's all good. That that likely got cut, but either way, just know there's plenty of examples out there <laughs> that. Um... They change stuff around. Like, even in the most recent Tam Lim Cup, you can't participate in the story unless you beat Lost Belt 6, but they'll let you still play the event. It's really weird. Like, <laughs> they didn't even bother to try and explain that how would you know Morgan if you weren't a part of Lost Belt 6? They were just like, eh, don't worry about it. We're the the, the it's answer is... Always a, it's always, like, an interesting um, mental exercise and, like, a lot of loops that you jump to. Essentially thinking that it's kind of like the Dragon Ball movies, like, timeline versus the, like, actual anime timeline, where, like, it's just things happen closely together, but any things that don't happen closely together or make sense, you just kind of think of it, oh, it kind of happened. Like, oh, you need to meet, you need to have met Morgan in LB6 for her to become a servant. Uh, at some point, either past, present, or future... Or you could just seriously start up Guyuki and she'll still be part of your Kaudia. And even if in the future you go through LB6, you're still going to be like, who's that? <laughs> You'll still be unaware of what their actual name is and be like, oh, I don't know who that could potentially be. It is really funny to think about that. Basically, everyone exists in the Tree of Might timeline where somehow Goku is in the middle of the Frieza fight with Yamcha, Tien, uh, Piccolo, all characters who died after the Saiyan saga. Yeah. And he's fighting He's fighting with them in the middle of... It, it is It is bizarre to think about, for sure. And, and, and like, they, and they kind of like lean into it, because there's, there was always, like, oh, like, three, like, chapter, like, summon, like, readings, like, what. But Oberon or Dolmen, and then like, how do you really make sense of that? Like, are they summoned in Fuyuki to 
this con- to this Chaldea, and then like is when you eventually meet them. Some co- um, or at least in Oprox case, that's like that. Yeah. Dolman, I believe, is one of the few cases where they like really leaned into it and made it like part of a sort of plot line. Do you know about how they how they did Dolman? By any chance? Uh, like how they make him make sense and how uh, with everything that goes on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It, I assume it's the same Dolman from Shimosa, right? It is, but yeah. So uh, if you don't know, I can I can let you know. I'm okay, just sure. Asking you. you can you can say so, it. Yeah. So when you when Dolman is summoned, he comes off as just like all oh, this regular like you know servant helper ally character that every servant comes up as, and then his bond lines and everything like attribute to that. For as far as you know, as a player that don't know his true like nature. He's just like this regular, you know, like uh, servant that's helping you. Maybe a little bit of evil, evil like um, a line. Uh, he does a little bit of some crazy things here, here and there. But you know, he's ultimately still on your side. Now, when you finish Shimosa, and then, or uh, I think not Shimosa, maybe like um, Hell's Mandala, probably. When you finish Hell's Mandala, it completely goes out the window because then he reveals. He's actually been the same one from the singularities that you've been fighting this whole time. He's just faking being your friend. Hmm. He's like Moriarty from Shinjuku on a like whole different level, and it carries through with different bond lines and lines that that are when you like summon him post like Hell's Mandala. I thought it was like, always like a really like cool effect. He like you eventually do get a moment where he is just. Yeah, where he's just like confronting you and like um, in the in the my room lines, like like um, just yeah, um, you knew all like like you knew all along, but that doesn't change our relationship or or whatever kind of thing. That is interesting. They went through a lot of effort for specifically Domin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is very silly that they do it like that, but. Mm-hmm. All right, just to do a finish wrap up because after talking about Halloween stuff, it's very clear to me that it's very clear to everyone that I am very disappointed in what Fago does with Halloween. <laughs> but it would I would be remiss without saying that the reason what what I would actually want out of a Halloween event and the answer is I just want something that someone cares about to write about and it doesn't have to necessarily be the scariest event in the world it just needs to mention something it's something that um you can very it can be very easy to forget but fago has multiple horror icons as just servants who hang around vlad is literally dracula he is has the legend of dracula and everything and he's only really ever been featured in the first and the second one and in the second one you get to see real vlad and i've always stood by the on my grounds of saying Fago doesn't like including real Vlad in events because he gets too real with what real Vlad is like. Yeah. <laughs> he instantly makes it feel... It's like that one scene in Summer where everyone in the Knights of the Round Table was having a silly, fun time, and then it went to Lancelot, and then it was a full character assassination. And it, it really, really changes the mood of everything. Um, That's what yeah. Vlad is. Um, but they have, obviously they have Dracula, they have Mr. Jekyll and, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, another, uh, horror icon. They have the literal bride of fucking Frankenstein in their game, <laughs> and you're telling me that they cannot, f- she has never once been involved in a single Halloween event ever? <laughs> Not one of them has Fran ever been mentioned or even acknowledged as anything. It is... It's they have the Phantom of the Opera, one of the first horror movies to be remembered as being in Technicolor with its colors and everything. They have the HP Lovecraft characters, <laughs> characters that were created by a man who was so scared of minorities he created elder gods to explain the fear of the unknown. <laughs> And they have never once been featured on a Halloween banner, in a Halloween except for one. And that one specific one was made into another girl failure and is nothing like any of the Eldritch Beaks. 
It is absolutely insane how many references to classic horror literature that exists. Hell, they even have the Invisible Man, because Lobo has the Invisible Man inside of him. That was one of the things the, that you get from being a, a participant in Shinjuku, is that you have some bullshit book inside of you, <laughs> thanks to Moriarty. <laughs> There's so that much. That, that, that funny thing that you brought up, because that, cause another piece of that came up during the recent Halloween event. Sorry interrupting you, but... No, no, it's, it, it's fine. I remembered it, because I remember when he showed up, I was like, wait a minute, that's right, you have the Invisible Man, <laughs> and they did not... I mean, they did reference that, I think, a little bit when they talk about Lobo and his ability and stuff. But either way, uh, it's definitely more pronounced in Shinjuku. And I think they've even put in the little lore bits that the um, the Invisible Man isn't currently working. That's why um, Lobo doesn't have the broken uh, evade that he has in the Shinjuku story. <laughs> <laughs> that makes them really good is that they actually created a lore reason for it to not to work. But you can see what I'm saying here is that they have a lot of really good horror dudes from horror literature that they can use for things and they just refuse to for whatever reason um they have they have an entire class built up of thanks to these horror dudes specifically from hp lovecraft side and except for one of them they don't really ever factor into anything it is mind-boggling it is it, it makes you scratch your head and go why would you do this you do so much. They showed more respect to the water margin, a Chinese book for Halloween, than they've done for any of the greater known Halloween stories or horror stories that have inspired countless people to create more. To create more, it is. It is the reason why I brought Common in here because if I did this alone, this video would have been two hours of me complaining. But thanks to Common, it's a little bit easier for me to only save the complaining for the end. I, just, I mm. oh, go ahead. Babe. No, that, um, just to, to sum it all up, I also uh, think that they should make um, costume dresses for Halloween costumes. I think that'd be oh, sick. I'm, I'm agree with that. Yeah, that that's literally would be the sickest thing. They have multiple yeah. CES featuring amazing art. The f Redrop had to release a Halloween CE that was not in the game because Go refuses to release anything Halloween related. Your own artists are revolting against you. Someone drew a CE of Melusane as like a bride, as a horror bride. It's insane. The people want Halloween. Give the people what they want. Go ahead, Common. I was going to say, coming in here, I was... I was going to be a lot more um, counter to you, but I didn't really respect um, expect that you had so much good points that you kind of like turned me to your side because that was something to just kind of go in here. And my main argument, if I was had the chance and that I wanted to say, it was just the fact that it's based off of Liz, Elizabeth Bathory, who is one of the most horrific beings in in all of history for all the rumors that she has which is about bathing in enough blood to fill a bathtub of virgin girls mm -hmm. and and being recursive of that to your horror icons that you're mentioning they don't even ever do that they never ever do anything with carmilla which is like the the manifestation of that character for for any halloween which i find interesting she but gets, yeah, she I, gets I, relegated I, to like a housemaid <laughs> Yeah, which yeah. I think is funny. I, I, I'm not going to deny it and say there hasn't been good laughs or hasn't been good chuckles. But you have to admit, when you consider that she is one of the greatest, like, actual legitimate serial killer monsters that has existed in the real world, and that's kind of what she gets reduced to. It's a little bit like, yeah. oh. And this is, again, as someone who has never been on the side of, I hate that Liz is the main focus. Nah, that's not me. I love Liz. This isn't about a put down on Liz. If you feel like that's what you came here for, I'm not going to give you that because that's not what I'm about, man. I'm all about <laughs> this specific. We're all, we're, we're, we're all Liz fans here. Exactly. We, we love her. We love, we love supporting her. I love uh, I love her Dracula cool song. Yes, and there even is something that could have been done. I would have even liked her to be it's to, to have added. I would have accepted an event of her trying to become as trying to market herself as a Halloween idol, and realize yeah. that wait a minute. During Halloween time, people will be really into a lot of the weird stuff I'm into. 
I think that we can do this together, uh, dear lit or whatever she calls the male version. I forget what the male is called. I'm pretty sure the female is called dear lit, but either way, there is a bunch. Oh, the of... male is uh, pig. Piglet. Oh, is it? Oh, piglet. Okay, that makes sense. I mainly play as the 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 female. Uh... I play mainly as a male, so we're kind of balanced there. Yeah, we balance each other right there on it. Um. But yeah, that that's basically all I wanted to say, everyone. And thank you very much. As we come to the end of the 13 Nights of Halloween, I saved it all. Um, thank you, Common, for joining. Thank um, you for inviting me once more to this lovely tradition we have every year. No problem. We weren't able to play the actual game that I said we would always play every year, but that's okay. It's because I was I was too terrified of the idea of playing it. We'll save it for next year. <laughs> Which is trying year. to trying to play more of Dread Out. I decided after I looked at it, do I want to play more Dread Out? You know what? We can wait a year. <laughs> I can be like Fago and wait a year for the sweet release of it and have something else here. It's all good. But thank you very much for joining us. And I think this is, now, I believe, the second year in a row where it's been you've been the final guest. So we'll see if we can continue on the tradition for it. We'll see I how it that, goes. I think that just speaks to me how terrible my my scheduling with with you is i always like really close to the end and this one's probably the closest we're we're recording this on, uh, thir- on mischief night day before mm-hmm. do you know are you aware of mischief night and De- or aka devil's night i'm aware of your sh- usual shift nights that it's been for the past few years mm. all right fair ever enough. since i met you but like i know you work like the the night shifts so. Yeah, um, this hasn't this um, a mischief night is actually something related to Halloween. It is a basic holiday that takes place before um, Halloween. It takes place on October thirtieth. Um, it used to be a night for people playing jokes, pranks, and doing vandalisms and making parties. Uh, they also have an alternate night, which is called Devil's Night, um, which is something that usually took place in Detroit. If you remember the movie The Crow. The crow takes place when he is killed. It takes place during Devil's Night, which is October 30th. Oh. Yeah. Uh, again, something that is uh, typically U.S. related. No one else calls it that. I believe it happens in Canada, and it might happen in England in some parts, but never to the extent that it is over here in the United States. So if you ever wondered why people do um, pranks and stuff, it's related to Mischief Night, and just over the years, they've just kind of combined into one. Uh, to one God. big thing. Yeah. But anyway, that's the end of the 13 Nights of Halloween, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll see you guys in the next spooky season. And come and I'll see. We'll see. I mean, I mean, you never know when I might accidentally come up with an idea and say, Common, you should be in this. And I'll ask you for it. But we'll see. Assume next year, reconvene. Mm hmm. Till next time. See you, uh, see you later, everyone. Have a nice night and have a happy morning. Happy morning, happy night, happy evening. Goodbye, everyone.